Let us look at what happened in Mumbai and how its municipal commissioner is actively destroying the city's healthcare industry and how his central command and control system might be killing COVID patients. But first, let's quickly understand what a command or a planned economy is. If the government decides what to produce, how much to produce and who should get the goods, it means we are living in a command economy also known as socialism. This was the state of Indian economy before the 90s. Televisions, phones, watches, automobiles, airlines, railways, mines, oil companies, banks, insurance companies were all owned by the government. Unfortunately, this has been proven to be a failed economic model. Soviet Union, East Germany, many other Eastern European countries and our own India are all classic examples of failures of socialism. Even today, we can see evidence of socialism's failure in Venezuela, Cuba and North Korea. Indian civil services, especially IAS Babus, were on the forefront of implementing the socialist license Raj till the early 90s. These Babus wielded enormous power over people's lives while actively transforming India into a bitterly poor third world country. In the early 90s, under P.V. Narsimrao's leadership, India embarked on an economic liberalization drive, but these IAS Babus were never retrained in liberal economic thought. As a consequence, these Babus have become an impediment to India's economic growth. Mumbai Municipal Commissioner Iqbal Singh Chahal is a textbook case of one such socialist Babu. Commissioner Iqbal Singh is a celebrity, a media darling and is seen by the public as a Covid slayer that saved Mumbai from the deadly epidemic. Iqbal Singh used the Disaster Management Act to become a dictator of Mumbai. He has taken over 80% of beds in all the private hospitals. In Mumbai, when patients get COVID testing done, they cannot get their reports from the labs because Commissioner Sahib gets them first. In an elaborate interview he gave to Shekhar Gupta of the print, he proudly says, I abolish the system of sharing positive COVID report directly by the lab with the patient. We were the first city in India to do so. We were getting 10,000 positive cases every day and now no patient is getting a positive report directly." End quote. Huh? This cracks me up. He is proud that he is the first in India to rob Mumbaikers right to their own lab results for which they have paid through their nose. It gets better. He goes on to defend his position by saying, if 10,000 reports are shared, there will be chaos in the city which is happening in other cities of India. No Sahib, there is no chaos in other Indian cities because of labs giving reports to people. There was chaos because enough hospital beds and oxygen were not available. But I have an alternate theory as to why you abolish the reports to patients. I think you abolish them because your control room could not handle the call volume. This is what you told Gupta. Mumbai was getting around 1500 positives every day and this list of positive emails would be flashed by the various testing labs to the patients around 7 pm. Suddenly these 1500 people and their relatives would start generating thousands of phone calls to one single control room in Mumbai and by 8 o'clock it would collapse. Aha! Thank you Commissioner Sahib for letting the cat out of the bag. So your control room call center was not able to handle the call volume and was crashing. Now in a situation like this, what would any normal executive do? He would first work on adding more phone lines and more staff to handle the increased call volume. That's a more sane response to a crashing call center. But our Babus think differently. Instead of fixing his call center, Commissioner Sahib decrees that no patient in Mumbai shall get a COVID positive report. I ain't kidding. Nobody, literally nobody in Bombay today can get their COVID positive report from their lab. So where do all these reports go? They go to the Commissioner Sahib's office. Astounding, isn't it? Since nobody in Bombay is getting a report, nobody is calling Commissioner Sahib's call center. Since nobody is calling the call center, it no longer crashes. Voila! Babu fixed the control room problem. I am not making this shit up guys. This is real and this would be funny if it were not tragic. But here is the better part. Our revered journalist Shekhar Gupta who is doing the interview doesn't ask a single critical question. Instead you will find him profusely drooling with admiration for the commissioner. So what happens after these covid reports reach commissioner sahib's office? Commissioner and his doctor's team play guard and decide who gets treated for COVID and who doesn't. 
they will call the patients the following day and inform them who the lucky winners are. If the sahib's minions decide that you don't deserve a treatment, you get none. You or your personal doctor or the hospital that has been treating you for years have zero say in your treatment decisions. Every doctor will have a different treatment philosophy. When I got COVID, other than paracetamol, my doctor refused to give me any medication. He said he will put me on other medicines only if the symptoms get worse. Whereas when my cousin tested positive, her pulmonologist immediately put her on Dolo, Ivermectin and Doxy. The point I'm making here is there is no one size fits all when it comes to treatment. In fact, the debate over the use of ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine for COVID treatment is still raging in the scientific community. Babus cannot understand this nuanced approach. For them, COVID is a cookie cutter treatment. For Commissioner Iqbal Singh, all residents of Mumbai are equal, just like all the sheep in my farm are equal to me. He proudly proclaims that everybody in Mumbai pays the same irrespective of whether they get treated in a star-rated top-of-the-line hospital or in a filthy rat-infested BMC run hospital. He says, 4,000 rupees for a COVID bed, 7,500 rupees for an ICU bed, 9,000 rupees for a ventilator bed, even for a place like Breach Candy. Breach Candy is the top-of-the-line hospital in Mumbai. And Iqbal Singh's equality drive doesn't end there. He says, Today, if a patient goes to government hospital like Scion, KEM or Nair or Breach Candy, the bill is same. This is fantastic. I can't believe this. This is fantastic. What is fantastic? This is not only not fantastic, this is a tragedy of monumental proportions. Iqbal Singh is unwittingly destroying Mumbai's healthcare system. I don't even know where to start with his economic fallacies. If everybody paying the same is such a fantastic concept, then Iqbal Singh and his peons should all be paid the same salary. Iqbal Singh's argument get more and more comical. Yet eminent journalist Shekhar Gupta doesn't ask a single pertinent question, nor does he challenge the commissioner's false assumptions. Gupta is now fully under Babu's spell. This kind of tyranny is only possible in North Korea. But who knew that it would come to India's commercial capital? Now, if somebody tries to admit themselves in a hospital without going through the commissioner's war room, they will be accused as spoiled, selfish, rich people cutting corners. Here's what he says about such people. In the first wave, 95% of people were coming from slums and 5% from non-slums. Slum people were very disciplined and they would never force the lab to share the positive report clandestinely. And they are happy with the 24 hours from the swab to the bed turnaround time in Mumbai. So slum people are happy, disciplined people. Now what does His Highness think about the bourgeois of Mumbai? In the second wave, rich and super rich are getting positive. Now these people, sir, they are so impatient. The moment the swab is taken, they put so much pressure on the labs every day 10, 20, 30 of them get direct positive report from the lab without realizing that they will become fish out of the water the moment they get direct report and they are out of BMC network. So the poor proletariat are good souls and the rich bourgeois are evil. This is now socialism on steroids. Slum dwelling comrades who tolerate 24 hour turnaround time after the swab is done are good people. But the rich bourgeois who want to get treated as soon as they find out that they are COVID positive are a nuisance. By the way, at this point, I was glad Commissioner Sahib's interview was happening online. Otherwise, Shekhar Gupta would have crossed over and kissed him. Gupta's surrender to Commissioner Sahib's charm offensive is now complete. Let's clear up some of Iqbal Singh's socialist fallacies. There is a romantic notion of treating the rich and poor the same. Let us say there is a taxi driver who gets up at 5 in the morning every day and drives his car for 12 hours while his wife works as a maid in five different houses. They have no vices, lead a disciplined life, send their two kids to a local private school and have savings which they invest in chit funds. Then there is another driver who works for 4-5 to five hours a day, spends all his earnings on alcohol and comes home to beat his wife and suffers from ill health. How is it moral to force the hardworking, disciplined taxi driver and the alcoholic, dysfunctional taxi driver to get the same treatment in a cockroach-infested BMC hospital? If the good driver wants to use his savings to get treated in a private Mohalla nursing home, why would you stop him? What use is his hard work and the sacrifices he has made if he can't spend his hard-earned money on himself and his family? Sure, let us help the poor and destitute, no problem. 
But what is this obsession with forcing those who can afford good treatment in private hospitals into filthy government facilities? There is another tragic consequence of this COVID dictatorship. Private healthcare system, which should be at the forefront of the COVID battle, is being actively destroyed by Iqbal Singh Chahal. We live in a world of limited resources. How do we know if we should establish new engineering colleges or new medical colleges or new hospitals? How many of each do we need? Do we invest in the pharma industry or the IT industry? How many laptops to make? How many cell phones to make? How many toothbrushes? How many light bulbs and TVs to manufacture? These decisions are made based on our purchases. Every time we spend money on a good or a service, we are casting a vote for it. Each purchase sends a signal to the producer to make more. In this pandemic, when people spend their money on COVID treatment, hospitals earnings go up and it sends a signal to these hospitals to expand their facilities and innovate. Apollo Hospital started with 370 employees in 1983. And today they have over 60,000 employees. How did its employee base grow 160 times with revenues of over 10,000 crores? Because people kept buying their services. That resulted in them making more profits. These profits are reinvested in the company. As a result, Apollo kept on expanding and served more and more patients. During the same period, scores of hospitals have shut down because people refused to buy their subpar services. That is the nature of the market. When Commissioner Iqbal Singh takes over 80% of the corporate hospital beds in Mumbai and pays them a pittance for COVID treatment, the profit signal is irretrievably lost. COVID is a deadly disease. To tackle it, massive investments are needed to increase hospital capacity. When well-to-do people admit themselves in these hospitals, profits kick in. Now that the government destroyed the profit-making ability of these hospitals, we can kiss goodbye to new investments that lead to better and more treatment facilities. If Iqbal Singh's principle had been applied to Apollo in the 1980s, it would still have the same 370 employees after 40 years of its existence. India's civil services were grown under successive socialist governments. They have been taught that profit is a dirty word. When a babu sees a flourishing business, they are tuned to think of it as a selfish, greedy, exploitative enterprise that requires regulating. Fearing the wrath of Iqbal Singh, private sector hospitals prostrate at his feet and hand over 80% of the hospital beds and put up a contrived smile of happiness. But Commissioner Iqbal Singh argues otherwise. He says, I salute the private sector in Mumbai, which is unlike other cities of India. The major 35 hospitals, Breach Candy, Nanavati, Leelawati, Hinduja, Bombay Hospital, they all surrendered 80% of their beds and 100% ICU to me. They have taken a hit of 700 crore rupees in Mumbai, but still they are with a smile serving us. What Iqbal Singh doesn't know is that these private hospital managements are friendly with him, not out of affection, but out of fear. Any little resistance from them, they all know that he will execute them in the public square by citing a thousand violations. When some hospitals tried to admit patients directly, here is how the commissioner reacted. Instructions of BMC are that you will not allot any bed directly and if you allot a bed, we will prosecute you like the Vitaldev Hospital. We filed FIR also against Nanavati Hospital. Commissioner Saheb, just a few minutes ago, you said hospitals voluntarily surrendered 80% of their beds with a smile. Then a few moments later, you bragged about beating hospitals into submission. Now I am confused. Did the hospital surrender the beds voluntarily or under duress? I think the latter is what happened. But here is the unfortunate reality. Many of these hospitals are bleeding. If this government evangelism at private hospitals expense continues, some of these hospitals will be shut down permanently. Dr. Sangeeta Reddy of Apollo Hospitals, who was also the President of Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, speaking to Indian Express said, at 20% occupancy levels, revenues per quarter of private hospitals are likely to drop to rupees 18,000 crores from rupees 59,000 crores and losses at around 22,000 crore rupees. The pain that the private sector is facing is the complete lack of revenue right now. The ability to say that we can provide free treatment for COVID-19 is not possible. Yet, heads of these hospitals, when they meet the babus, they will salute and contrive a smile of cooperation. With all this tamasha, did Commissioner Iqbal Singh manage COVID pandemic better than other major Indian cities? No, it turns out he is one of the worst performers. 
when we looked at district wise covid infection data published by the development data lab mumbai district is the worst performing district among the districts of delhi pune chennai bengaluru and kolkata mumbai district has the highest 202 covid infections for every 1000 people now commissioner iqbal singh may argue that he has been transparent with reporting covid test results and hence their numbers are high yes there is some merit to that argument we then looked at another important statistic among covid positives how many died if mumbai is such a role model for the country and hospital beds are empty because iqbal singh is managing it so well then death should be low surprise surprise here also mumbai district is the worst among its peers with highest deaths of 20 for every 1000 covid positive patients clearly the mumbai success story which even the supreme court judge chandrachud was going gaga about is all smoke and mirrors government cannot and should not be the judge of who gets covid treatment and who does not playing god is immoral central command control systems by design do not work mumbai looks like a well greased machinery because hospitals are not overflowing hospitals are not overflowing because bmc is stopping people from going to the hospitals government induced delay in getting treatment right away and government screening for treatment winners could be one of the important reasons why deaths are highest in mumbai district when compared to other metropolitan districts also private hospitals like the government hospitals have no incentive to provide high quality treatment to the patients because the fee is capped and the government will keep sending patients irrespective of the quality of treatment that can also result in higher deaths there is no doubt covid patients in india have endured immense hardships during both waves of the epidemic but to attribute these failures to corporate greed and profiteering is a joke even to this day in a country of 130 crore people nobody from kashi to kanyakumari can start a medical college without getting approval from the corrupt delhi babus why does a state need permission from delhi's intractable and corrupt bureaucracy to start a medical college there has been a dire scarcity of doctors in india since the day we got independence state and central governments have killed the entrepreneurial spirit in medical sciences with their nonsensical regulations it is a miracle that even these many private hospitals are running today after seven decades of self rule we indians have hardly learned anything from our past socialist mistakes that turned india into a third world mess we still love to deify iqbal singhs and demonize pratap reddys the cancer of socialism has crept into our dna